All right, General, we, I think that the Russians thought that this war was going to be over in a couple of days. They would strike quickly, move in, approach Kiev, surround it, and, and potentially replace the government. That has not happened. In fact, their troops that have been approaching Kiev have mm -hmm. essentially been bogged down for weeks. So what's your take on what is holding them up and, and, and why are they having such a hard time? Sure. I mean, that's really a great question, and everybody's been watching this now for this, this sad story unfold. Um, the Russians are creating a humanitarian uh, crisis right now with their indiscriminate bombing and basically uh, their inept combat power. Um, they've not done a great job, and they're kind of thrashing around right now like a bulldozer creating havoc. The, the problem is that they did not realize they were going to be up against a national insurgency much different than the one we faced in Iraq and Afghanistan, where roughly five, maybe 10 percent of the population at most was involved. Um, they have every every person in, in Ukraine is now volunteering their services. All the men, many women and even the elderly are building the Molotov cocktails. We've been training uh, their insurgents with our Green Berets and infantry for five years now. They've received training from uh, the Chechnyans, the Georgians on how to fight Russians. But the bottom line comes back to it's an amateur army that is not well resourced, not well trained and poorly led. Well, General Hammond, so what are the potential options for the Russians now? We saw today uh, truly just the bombardment of Kyiv, many residential buildings just kind of being shelled. And then also there's this fear now of potentially a chemical attack. So what are their options and what are the potential risks we face? So on the, on the first side to the first part of your question, he's got a couple options. There's two that I see. The first is probably the most likely, and, and that's where he goes out and tries to create as much disruption, break as many things as he can. And by that, I mean bomb the heck out of all the major cities, cause as much havoc and destruction as he can, and then try and develop a settlement where he reclaims the, the eastern and southern province, as well as a pledge of neutrality. I mean, that, that's, I think, what he would settle for at some point, but he also needs to reap havoc because He's been made to look incredibly foolish, and as, as a narcissistic little guy, he's going to want to try and reap some havoc and, and draw some pain. Uh, the second part of that is a little more tricky. He, he could become emboldened. Um, he, he's pushing our buttons. He, he was probing the edge of Poland the other day. He hit it with some drones. He's pushing the edge of our limits. If he hits with chemicals, we've talked about a red line. We've talked about severe consequences. We don't know what those are. Um, but we do want to avoid escalation. If he senses weakness, he may go after Moldova. Um, it's only six miles, approximately a little six to ten miles from uh, Odessa. And he's got the troops there, and he's got a similar claim as the one as he does with the Ukraine, with Moldova. Um, and he's got other areas that he can try and press pressure us and, and try and secure some land.